Hello, you guys. Welcome to today's presentation. It's Dr. Jones. Let me just get to the right slide. Today's presentation is a follow-up or an encore presentation of our cat health and nutrition webinar. I'm just I went through and I've since modified the slides. I now just have to figure out how to get back to the home button. Let me just figure it out. I wanted to make sure that I'd uploaded the right presentation. And I have, let me just figure out how to get to the home button. Yay, I've done it. Whoa. Perfect. Okay, and I'm just making sure it's all good. My brother's texting me. Um, hopefully he can see me that I'm on because I've got the record button on. I've got the audio button on. So first, I'd love it if you guys would just type something in the chat that I can see to say that you can hear me or not would be awesome. Hi, Karen. Hey, one person can hear me. At least we're speaking to an audience of one. That's awesome. Um, hi, you guys. Karen's in San Diego and can hear me and Michelle and Paula. Yay, that's awesome. First of all, thanks for being here. It's Dr. Jones. I'm going to get right into the presentation because I got we're a bunch of things that we're going to cover today. And I want to leave a little bit of time at the end, too, so we can go over some of your specific questions. And it's all about how to keep your cat healthy with food and at-home remedies. We're covering a bunch of stuff, right? So just be as focused as you can. Shut up all those instant reminders. Try to take away <clears throat> three to five things from today's presentation that you're going to apply. But actually change with how you're treating and or feeding your cat over the next month. Find out that's probably the most useful way to get the most out of it. That's me. I was born and raised in a farm here in British Columbia, Canada. I'm pictured there with my styling haircut and shorts and our cat beauty. Always always kind of a little geeky kid into animals. <clears throat> it's awesome. I became a veterinarian. Definitely a good fit. I graduated in 1992 with my DVM. I practiced for nearly 20 years. Mm. And really became increasingly interested in alternative uh, natural pet care. And in part, that was where I was living many of the clients that was really their interest and that really kind of brought me down that path of where we are today i published i was featured on abc's new show 2020 fairly controversial at the time and it's still up online so you can google that 2020 and up i will come release my quote unquote first real book on amazon in 2014. Uh, really happy to see it go on to become a number one bestseller we're currently working on the second edition. I currently have the largest natural pet health and wellness channel on YouTube with now over 400,000 subscribers, which is awesome. If you've yet to subscribe, it'd be awesome if you do so. After a webinar, just Google my name, or Dr. Andrew Jones YouTube or Veterinary Secrets YouTube, and up I will come. In part, this is a memory to my last cat, Gussie. She was my mom's cat. It's kind of neat how cats sort of just infiltrate your house and your life. She's kind of the shyest cat. She kind of sort of took over the house, and there she is, owning the couch, spreading her fur. Yeah, but she was a great little cat. Then this is our new cat, Murray. He is now, he came to me as a diabetic, and he's now being managed without insulin. So we're going to talk about that today as well, too. The incorrect assumptions of feeding cats that are causing health problems. What you need to know about cat food. So what is it about cats and our food? Well, much of what I was originally taught as a practicing veterinarian, both for the treatment and prevention of disease of, of cats and food, has been shown to be false. And I mean, I've repeated these many times. But cats, they're obligate carnivores, meaning they need animal protein to survive. And many of the common cat diseases are directly linked to our incorrect assumptions of feeding cats the same way we feed dogs. Like they're not small dogs. Very different. They've evolved over millions of years. They're carnivores and they have unique ways to utilize the food that they hunt. Like what they do with that protein and how they use protein as the primary source of everything that they need for their body. You know, think about what a cat would eat in the wild. Lots of protein, lots of fat, no carbohydrate. And this core concept should be at the forefront of cat nutrition and disease. But unfortunately, yet it's not. I mean, cats, they require much higher protein than dogs. A minimum of 29% versus the canine minimum of 12%. You know, it's so over three times. Or got my math wrong. Two and a half times. 
they have all these animals with very poor triggers for thirst, right? And like they're they're not accustomed to drinking, right? They would get the pro their moisture from the prey. Once again, but what are we doing? We're feeding them dry kibble. Fortunately, things like canned food, homemade food, it's much more similar to their natural diet. So they can actually get most of their moisture from that versus, you know, dry kibble where there's nothing there. It's, there's no moisture in it. You know, they're adapted to eating multiple small meals throughout the day. A cat in the wild might eat, eat up to 20 meals a day. And they're very sensitive to how the food feels, tastes, smells, right? They most cats, especially if they're started out early and they're given the preference, they would prefer foods that are like, Flash, moist, solid, and warm. Not this kind of dry, bland, flavorless kibble. So what, you know, and who do you ask about who is best to feed your cat? Like, where do you get your nutritional advice? So this comes from one uh, respected feline veterinarian, Dr. Lisa Pearson, who says, unfortunately, many veterinarians are not the best source of nutritional advice for your cat. And I tend to agree. You know, me originally being one of them, right? Because I just looked at it the same way. And that's what we're taught. Cats, dog, pretty much the same. Think of them as small dogs. So, so wrong. Putting a little thought into what you feed your cat over their life to kind of can pay huge dividends and help them avoid serious, painful, life-threatening diseases, such as urinary tract disease. And an increasing number of nutritious-savvy sa nutritious veterinarians they're really suggesting otherwise, like change how you feed your cats, stop feeding them kibble. However, many veterinarians are still recommending the feeding of dry food to cats. And sadly, you know, this species inappropriate source of food only serves to promote disease in our cats. So what do you do? You know, like medical doctors, veterinarians, they receive very little training in school regarding nutrition. You know, this comes from Dr. Lisa Pearson, but this completely reflects my own experience, right? We didn't talk much. And who taught us? We've got the large pet food companies. They sponsor parts of the vet curriculum. Sure enough, often they're the ones who are like, you know, giving us the education about food. And then you get into practice and who's there to teach you? It's the food reps, right? They're the guys that are coming by. So sure enough, what do you learn more about why this dry food is so good? Hmm, clearly a conflict of interest. Yet when you're looking at your cats, like just think about it holistically and historically and what makes the most sense. Our goal is to feed a diet the nature intended for our carnivores, you know, staying as close as possible to the form and nutritional composition that our cats would get in the wild, right? So they're not eating dry kibble. They're eating water, protein-rich food, you know, such as canned homemade raw food. Dental disease. Some remedies to help prevent and treat this in your cat. There's a kitty with a moderate dental tartar. You can see uh, the amount of tartar, a little bit of gingivitis on the gum line. For years, I mean, I was the same one. We told clients, just eat dry food. It's going to promote, it's going to keep your cat's teeth healthy. He crunches on the kibble. But guess what? Dry food is really firm. It has very little rubbing action. And it's not removing the tartar as you'd expect. I mean, many cats, they just swallow the dry food whole. They're chewing. And our cats are carnivores, right? Their teeth are they're pointy and sharp. They're designed for tearing into flesh and bones. They're not flat like a cow's teeth that like grind down grass or to grind down kibble. Yes, brushing is huge. I'm sure you've heard it many times. It's just a really, you should start out period. If you've yet to do it, I really saw it in practice made a big, big difference. The clients that would brush their cat's teeth markedly better. You know, and ideally you really need to do it once a day to make a quantum difference. But I even had some clients just doing it once a week. So much better than not doing it at all. You can start, start with a small finger toothbrush and you can use a natural type toothpaste and baking soda often is completely fine. I had many clients using this, this dental spray called Liba 3. And for some guys, it's just so hard to get a toothbrush in there actually physically, you know, brushing your cat's teeth. But sometimes this spray was enough just to keep the tartar down, keep the gums uh, less inflamed. Another product called Plaque Off, it comes from, uh, it's a product from seaweed, it's rich in iodine. I don't know exactly how it works, but it definitely alters uh, the bacterial makeup of the mouth. 
And these same cats would have far less dental tartars and far lower incidence of gingivitis. So it's another good option. So long as your cat is not hyperthyroid, then they can't be on plaque off. This is a good natural oral and rinse. So say we've got a cat that's got serious gingivitis and it's much more of a common in many of our cats and dogs. So they get this really infl infl marked inflammation at the gum line. An oral rinse to consider be using green tea. with So a cup of green tea with 10 drops of lemon or 10 drops of peppermint essential oil. You get a 3cc or 5cc syringe. You're squirting one mil on the top of the mouth, one mil on the bottom of the mouth using your finger to sort of rinse it around right along their gum line and then sucking in a quill amount of water and just flushing that back into their mouth. You're trying to you know, flush the mouth, flush out the bacteria that are growing there, decreasing the inflammation. Another option is coconut oil. We don't talk about it very much. I mean, I do it obviously in the presentation, but you don't hear much about it. But there's a bunch of research now showing that it can decrease plaque buildup, decrease gingivitis. And you know, this one study, they, this was 60 people. Um, they showed that decreased plaque buildup and signs of gingivitis in 60 participants with plaque-induced gum disease, which is what many of our cats get. And this is a good option here where you're using a tincture called licorice root tincture. It's an herbal tincture. We're going to talk about it for as a natural corticosteroid to decrease itching and inflammation. Also, it's a really good antiviral and works, can work really well in combination with coconut oil to decrease gingivitis, serious gum inflammation. And the way you'd make it is you'd have two tablespoons of coconut oil, one to two mils of this licorice root tincture. You mix it up together. So you got a fluid mixed up with the fat and it forms a really nice little paste. And you could put a small amount in your finger, rubbing that on your cat's gums once or twice a day. You've got a cat with severe gingivitis, stomatitis, Here's a good option to try. Other options, coenzyme Q10, this antioxidant, really important in cells that have high oxygen, oxygen demand, such as those in the mouth. I'm looking at doses of it of 0.5 to one milligrams per pound daily. Also really important for cats that have heart disease. Propolis, it comes, Propolis, these next two products, Propolis, uh, a little silver spray. They come as a spray. So propolis is known as bee glue. Bees use it to sort of fortify their hive, right? That's what's called bee glue. It's this great little spray. I used it for a sore throat. Works awesome. But you can actually spray it into your cat's mouth. And as you know, lots of cats don't like you to give anything orally. A spray is probably the easiest thing to do. So that's a good option. Um, and it's got some great antiviral, antibacterial properties. Will decrease the inflammation of the inflamed gums. So I really think that's a super good option if you get to try anything in your cat's mouth. And colloidal silver, another good option. That's got some really impressive antibacterial properties more than anything. And it's easy to give as a spray. And many cats respond to it as well. My own cat had an, a bit of an infection about a week ago. He's really limping on one leg. So I gave him oral colloidal silver as a natural antibacterial. Works really well because I he hasn't needed to be on antibiotics. Kidney failure in cats, you should be focused on this lowering this one ingredient and no, it's not protein. So what is kidney disease? And here's an older cat. Up to 30 to 50% of cats past the age of about 12 or 13 seem to have some degree of kidney disease. What are some of the signs? Are cats drinking more water, urinating more often? They may be losing weight, especially as they lose muscle mass. They lose protein through their kidneys and you can see this marked sort of loss of muscle mass. As kidney failure advances, your cat becomes weak due to things such as anemia and these increased amounts of these kidney toxins, right? They increase urea, creatinine, because the kidneys are there to filter the blood, concentrate the urine, they want to retain as much moisture, and then excrete the toxins that are no longer needed. Two toxins, urea, creatinine, are breakdown products after proteins are metabolized. But as kidney failure, you can't do it the same way. So these toxins build up in the blood and your cat feels sick. They'll get stop drinking, get de dehydrated because they can't retain all the moisture. May go completely off food. Some cats can have elevated blood pressure and it can also, that also can affect their eyesight. Some cats actually can go blind. So most veterinarians, this is typically in the past and I was the same one. We'd say, yeah, get your cat on this low protein can low protein cat food. Hills would say, here's this KD diet. This is good for your cat. 
kidney disease. Yet to date, there are no studies showing that restricting protein will prevent further deterioration of kidney function. So what do you do? In fact, well, many veterinary cat specialists are now advising to maintain protein levels, but restrict phosphorus, because that's the nutrient in the animal protein that is damaging the kidneys. So how do you do that? So once, say you've got a cat with chronic kidney disease, CKD, first thing, fluid. Most important thing, one of the most important things you can do for your cat with kidney disease is to maintain adequate hydration, right? Offering lots of fresh water. You're making the switch to a good quality canned cat food. Learn how to give sub-Q fluids at home. I've got a video on YouTube, shows you how to do it. Pretty simple and easy thing to do. I had lots of clients doing this once a week at home. You get an IV fluid bag, a drip set, a mid-sized needle. You pop it just in between your cat's shoulder blades. Most cats tolerate it fine. Uh, I've done it with my cat, Murray, and I just put a bit of canned food in front of him. He's eating the canned food. Like, he's hard to do things to. Like, he's hard to trim his nails. He's like a... Turns into this crazy cat. But I could do sub fluids, and he just sat there. He's eating the food. He felt a teeny little prick. The needle went under his skin, and then he's like, fine, I'll just eat my food. And you give me 125 mils of fluid, which is about a half a cup of fluid. Some guys, it's just once a week, make a huge difference uh, to keeping them hydrated. Probiotics. So probiotics, these are these good bacteria. And this one in particular is interesting, is that it helps metabolize and flush out some of these kidney toxins, urea, creatinine, which is a great way, another way to naturally help kidney disease. Right? We're looking at azadilzose of one capsule per 10 pounds of body weight daily, up to a, a maximum dose of four caps a day. Some other ways to reduce phosphorus, right? So we want to use some type of phosphorus binder, things to bind the phosphorus so it's not further damaging the kidney. I really think it's a pretty big key thing to do, especially early on in kidney disease. Aluminum hydroxide. So it's a phosphorus binder. I used to use a lot in practice. You can get it as a powder. Sometimes it can be compounded as a liquid, odorless and tasteless, easy to mix with food. Standard dose, about a quarter of a teaspoon per 10 pounds daily. And it works quite well. Easy thing is it's easy to mix in. But some people have concerns uh, about some of the, say the aluminum, right? The heavy metal, that's part of that. So other ways to bind phosphorus is with additional calcium. One would be Tums, which is just calcium carbonate. It's an easy thing to do. You know, a quarter of a 650 milligram tablet for 10 pounds of body weight twice daily, or, you know, half a, half a tablet a day, but 300 milligrams of Tums per day. You can grind that up. You make your own natural calcium carbonate, just grinding crushed eggshells. You can buy this product, eggshell. It's another form of crushed eggshells. About a quarter of a teaspoon per day, per cat a day is kind of a standard amount. Right? You could actually just take eggshells, bake them in your, clean them. After you've cracked open an egg, you bake baking it in the oven for about 10 or 15 minutes. Grind them really fine in a coffee grinder, and this is what you're left with, crushed eggshells. Then this one, apochitin, we used to use this in practice a lot. It comes from crushed a crushed shellfish, the shells of crushed shellfish. But also it's got other ingredients in it, some type of sugar-related sugar products. That not only, so we've got the calcium carbonate in it will bind the phosphorus, decreasing phosphorus. But also it helps to decrease urea and creatinine. So it's a super good option if you're able to get it as a supplement for a cat with CKD. If Murray would have kidney disease, I would definitely, I'd be getting on some epichitin. Other things to consider, as it progresses, these guys can feel kind of nauseous and sick. So what I found in practice, lots of cats responded really well to Pepsid. We're looking at doses, about a quarter of a tablet, which is two and a half milligrams for 10 pounds of body weight twice daily. Pretty standard, but some cats, as you know, it's hard to get tablets into them. Um, but especially they're really, you know, and they go, they can wax on wanes, can go through bouts. They don't need it all the time, but you can tell your cat doesn't feel good. He's not interested in food. You pop in a Pepsi an hour later, he's eating. But then this natural antacid, slippery elm, is another really good option. So it comes from the bark of the slippery elm tree, been used for hundreds, if not thousands of years. Works really well for cats with CKD, especially the ones that are kind of nauseous from kidney disease. So you can get it as a capsule formation, break open the capsule. It's a standard capsules or 400 milligram capsules, mix it into their canned food. And for lots of cats, this is working really well. And they seem to, especially the cats with kidney disease, tolerate slippery elm especially well. 
Arthritis in cats. Super common, right? Our cats are living longer. We're taking better care of them. Murray's got, he's kind of limping intermittently on one leg. I'm like, hey, you got some arthritis. Especially, it doesn't help if you're a bit more overweight, more prone to arthritis. So you want to start with a good arthritic supplement base. Glucosamine, chondroitin, MSM. In these amounts, 100 milligrams per 10 pounds daily of glucosamine, 50 milligrams per 10 pounds daily of chondroitin, uh, 100 milligrams per 10 pounds daily of MSM. All three of these are in my supplement, Ultimate Feline Health Formula. Omega-3 fatty acids. I mean, there's tons of studies showing the clear benefits of omega-3 fatty acids in animals that have arthritis. Wonderful natural anti-inflammatories. Decreasing the inflammation in the joint, your cat feels better. They should, I mean, they have so, so many, many benefits. Good options, creole oil, fish oil, doses of 500 to 1,000 milligrams per 10 pounds of body weight daily. I now have a creole oil supplement. Acupressure. <laughs> Overlooked, what is it? <clears throat> I'm just a little bit drink of tea, been, too, been talking too much lately. <clears throat> All these webinars. Uh, <clears throat> so acupressure related, obviously related to acupuncture. And these are just acupuncture points. And obviously this comes from Chinese medicine. I'm not going to teach you acupuncture today. You're going to be putting needles in your cat. But you can hit key acupressure points. And that's over top of the acupuncture points. One is called the BL60 to the KI3 point. There's this flap of skin. If you pick up your, your ankle, there you've got that big, above your ankle, you've got your Achilles tendon. Between the Achilles tendon and the bone, that's where the BL60, the KA3 points are located. The BL60 is on the outside. The KA3 is on the inside. Use your thumb, uh, your index finger, and just hold them together. Right, Hold that for 30 to 60 seconds. Do that twice a day for a week. That's lots of cats, lots of animals respond well to that. And it's worth time, right? If you have the option to use Chinese medicine and, and get acupuncture, great option. GB29, GB30 point. Uh, these are found in the depressions. There's a point called the point of the femur. If you follow the, your cat's back leg, the main bone that makes up the hip joint is called the femur. On the top of the femur, there's a little bone that sticks out. There's a depression behind that, depression in front of that. That's the GB29, GB30 points, right? You put your two middle, your middle finger, index finger there, hold that for 30 to 60 seconds, do that twice a day for a week. You've got a cat who's been limping on his rear leg, maybe some hip dysplasia. Another really good option. I show you on YouTube also how to do acupressure. CBD or cannabidiol. It's been extensively studied for its natural anti-inflammatory and pain controlling properties, right? Works really well for many cats. Standard doses of three milligrams per 10 pounds of body weight daily. That equates to one drop per day of my CBD supplement, the CBD supplement.com. DMSO, dimethyl sulfoxide. It's actually a byproduct of paper manufacturing, first discovered in the 1800s by a Russian chemist. Yes, sometimes the Russians do some good things. Discovering DMSO is one of them. It's also found naturally occurring in garlic as one of the roots, 70 plus sulfur compounds. The neat thing about DMSO is it rapidly penetrates the skin. Super inexpensive. I picked it up at my natural health store, the co-op, like 10 bucks for a mid-sized bottle. Lasts a long time. So it readily penetrates the skin. On its own, it's anti-inflammatory. So you can put it on to say your cat's got a sore knee. Your cat has a sore hip, you put it right onto that spot. Or you can put another cream on topically, say a homeopathic like Tromiel. It'll help bring that into the joint, the affected joint. Great option. And it can be used uh, twice a day comfortably. You can do it for one to two weeks and see if it's helping your cat or not. A bit more about medical marijuana for cats. There's a happy looking little kitty. A CBD or cannabidiol. It's known as a cannabinoid. And these are, it's one of 85 different chemical substances found in the cannabis plant. CBD is non-psychoactive, THC, it's a psychoactive ingredient. Both of them can have therapeutic benefits. Some of the benefits of CBD or cannabidiol for arthritis, natural pain control, for the seizure disorders, for anxiety, for sure cats that have urinary tract disease relating to anxiety, and then for cancer. You know, depending on what we're treating. So for seizures, you just want to be using CBD. 
For animals say, that have cancer, ideally you're going to use CBD in combination with THC. Obviously that depends on where you live and if you have access to it. But that's what I've been finding, right? It depends on the disease itself, but if it's cancer, ideally you can have up to 25% THC as well. You are always do base the dose on the CBD concentration. And the standard dose is 3 milligrams of CBD for 10 pounds of body weight daily. Supplement safety. How do you know if supplements are safe for your cat? Should you be giving your cat a supplement in the first place? Well, in light of, you know, these ongoing pet food recalls, contaminated pet foods, pretty important question, right? As a consumer, it's difficult to know. There's, these vol there's this voluntary governing body, but there's no independent regulator. So you need to do your own research, you know, research the company, visit the website. Can you phone them? Do they do independent third-party testing? This means getting the product tested prior to leaving the plant, right? Is there a guarantee that what's written on the label is actually in the bottle? All right. Are they manufacturing to human-grade standards, outsourcing? You should expect the ingredients are top quality from reputable locally sourced as much as possible. And look for reference, testimonials from other pet owners. Right? A bit more about my supplement, Dr. Jones' Ultimate Feline Health Formula. There's our website, thecatsupplement.com. You can phone us at 888-842-9057. My supplement is third-party tested by an independent lab, and I guarantee you that what's on my label is in the bottle. It's manufactured to human-grade standards. The ingredients for some of the most highly reputable quality suppliers in the industry and they're primarily sourced locally. Testimonials. Here's just one of many from Dolores. He eats with enthusiasm he just and finished the food. I just ordered Ultimate Feline, but I've already witnessed that this product truly enhances my cat's appetite. One of my old cats is a finicky cat, but I sprinkle the product on top of the food. He eats with enthusiasm and he just finished the food. I know this is just the beginning of my good journey with the product. Thanks, Dr. Jones. Thanks, Dolores. So here's where I made a big special going on now. It's 70% off my supplement, Ultimate Feline Health Formula, being offered for only $9.97. Regular price is $32.97 plus shipping. Plus, you're not locked into anything. Plus, we have our brand new size and economy size, which includes six jars, right? So you guys have multiple cat households. And this is a great deal. It's it's being offered now for 55% off, but just for this special only. Plus, if you order in the next 12 hours, actually about 16, you can get one, two additional free bonuses. First, a copy of my best-selling book, Veterinary Secrets, Nuts for Health for Dogs and Cats, and a copy of my book, Home Diets for Pets. So after the presentation, you can go to thecatsupplement.com forward slash special. Toxins, things that are hazardous to your cat you may not be aware of, but you should be aware of. These are some of the more common ones I think you should know about. First, tuna. I usually give Murray lots of tuna, a moderate amount. But, you know, it's especially high in mercury. Right? We've contaminated the oceans, it concentrates in the fish. So your cat can actually get clinical mercury poisoning if you eat them too much tuna. So it's got to be like just teeny amounts, very much in moderation. And it's also really high in salt, right? So it can make it even worse if your cat has like diabetes, uh, your cat has underlying heart disease, any of the canned foods. Second, PBEs, these fire, PBDEs, these fire retardant chemicals, they can be found in high concentrations in fish, but also just in house dust, right? Because they're in things like your sofa, in the mattresses. That's where they concentrate in. And they're known to affect things such as the thyroid function. You know, and we know that when there's cat foods high in fish, we know there's a clear causal link between hyperthyroidism fish consumption, right? Okay, once again, what else are we doing to our cats? No wonder they're sick. Soy and cat food, right? There's, like, why would soy be in cat food? Well, there's, we know it's a known disruptor of thyroid gland function, right? It has no logical place in cat food, but it's there because it makes the cat food look like it's higher in protein, right? According to one study, soy was identified in 60% of all tested cat foods at a level high enough to interfere with thyroid function. Really? Some of these medications for pain and inflammation, like you'd be so cautious giving anything to your cat, 
especially conventionally, like especially pain related things. Like if it's pain wise, do not do it. All right. Here, things like aspirin can be seriously toxic, beyond toxic. Ibuprofen, completely toxic. Even sort of the conventional anti-inflammatories like Medicam, you have to be really cautious ever using these in your cats, right? You can see, you know, short-term vomiting, diarrhea, blood in the stool, shock, lethargy, difficulty breathing, acute kidney failure, and no period of time. Then things like acetaminophen or Tylenol, like so, so toxic, you know, that can really affect us. You take one or two, it's okay. But immediate toxicity to your cats and felts within one to four hours of ingestion. I can't think of the number of cats I saw with Tylenol toxicity. There should be like huge warnings. Regardless, so what happens, these guys get progressive depression, they start to breed rapidly. They'll actually see their gums are like cyanotic, this bluish color. Right? Unreal what happens. Lilies, right? We think lit, it's a flower. How dangerous can it be, right? They're all around. So, so toxic to your cat. The tiger lily, the day lily, you know, the stargazer, western lily of the valley. Like even small ingestions, such as two to three petals or leaves, even the water from the vase can result in severe acute kidney failure. All right. So a bunch of those things to consider and just, just be really aware of what your cat's eating, what you're exposing your cat to. If you're not sure, don't give it to your cat. And when I look at, if you look at poison control and look at the list of things that, that are reported toxic to cats, like anti-inflammatories are like right there and they're number one, right? So it's just like, Anti-inflammatory, just don't give it your cat. Just like stop. If you need a natural anti-inflammatory, get some CBD into your house. Natural antivirals. I used to see so many cats with the cat flu, and sometimes recurring cases of the cat flu. One of my last cats, Cleo, he had re repeated bouts of the cat flu, and I should have tried some of these things. But here's some one to consider: elderberry. I've got the juice in my freezer. We have elderberry trees growing outside. It's got this long, rich hist of medicinal benefits for people. Guess what? Also beneficial, beneficial for our cats, especially for the respiratory diseases, the respiratory viruses, influenza, for herpes. Right? This one study published in the journal Alternative and Complementary Medicine concluded that elderberry can be used as a safe treatment for influenza type A and B. Like, really effective and potentially safe and safe for our cats. Cat elderberry dose, about 100 milligrams per 10 pounds of body weight twice daily. Licorice root, we talked about it earlier for the, for the gums. It's emerging. It's also got some uh, array of different antiviral properties. It's one of the key components of many of the Chinese uh, herbal medicines, right? They're using licorice root because of it, right? Because it can affect so many different diseases. Pretty key antiviral. We're looking at doses of licorice root, a quarter of a meal per 10 pounds of body weight twice daily. It's meant to be used short term for 10 to 14 days. So when there's a big viral flare up. Then, and then consider L-lysine in particular, right? And there should be one more slide, I'm not sure, but L-lysine, it's kind of, this was the standard. We see these cats with recurring bouts of the bat, re recurring bouts of the cat flu. Sure enough, we get them on this, this inexpensive, healthy amino acid, and guess what? Lots of cats respond, but they need to be on it for three to four months before you can judge whether it's effective or not. I wonder if I have one more. I do. I have propolis on here. Here's this bee glue or the bee resin. It's also got antiviral properties. <clears throat> so once again, you've got this cat, say, with recurring bouts of the cat flu, and you've tried other things. Have you tried propolis yet? Another super good option. Inexpensive, darn safe. And it tastes, I don't know, I kind of like the, you know, I use the, the spray orally. And it tastes kind of sweet, tastes like honey. Oh my God, another good, good option. Sort of standard dose is about two drops per 10 pounds of body weight twice daily. The unique metabolism of your cat and why carbs can be harmful. So yeah, cats can use carbohydrates, but they have, they've evolved by hunting animals with you know high protein, high fat, no carbs. They're designed for high protein metabolism, high protein metabolism, low carb metabolism, right? They lack salivary amylase. Further evidence, they're not designed to digest carbohydrates. They're, they have only 5% of the pancreatic amylase and 10% of the intestinal amylase of dogs. Like they're not digest, di designed for carb metabolism. 
right? They get far more of their energy from protein than most species. They've got the short colon, right? And the colon is what is used to digest things like starches, right? They don't have it because they don't need it because they're supposed to be eating protein. They lack the liver enzyme glucokinase. This is used to break down blood sugar. So they eat a high carb meal, their blood sugar spikes, but they lack the ability to rapidly break it down. Clearly this is health consequences, i.e. diabetes, right? You got all that sugar overwhelming their body and their pancreas. And so what do we do? We turn our cats into diabetics. That would be Murray's problem. So knowing stuff like this, how should you think about choosing a quality cat food? What are most cats fed? Most cats are fed, and I fed my cats much the same way, dry kibble with no water, predisposing to urinary tract disease, kidney disease. Foods with too high of a carbohydrate level, predisposing your cat to obesity, diabetes, arthritis. The wrong type of protein, i.e. soy or a plant, a plant protein, at far too low of a level. Right? Like, okay. So you can see how we run into health problems with our cats. So if you're looking at the food, look at the top five ingredients. They make up 70% more of the pet food's entire formula. The first ingredient is most important. There's more of that ingredient than any other. But you need to, you know, this this can change based, based on the moisture content of the food. The food companies can play around with it. So you have to be really cautious and, and know that you're going to be spending a bit more to get a quality food. And you look at that ingredient list and know that, okay, this is really legitimate. They haven't done their sort of hokey pokey magic to make it look better than it is. Next, you look for the first name source of fat. Anything listed before the, the fat source and including it make up the main portion of the food. You know, you need to support companies with good track records, right? Producing healthy foods, strict quality control. Like that's more than anything because you can't, so hard, you can't, you're not going to become this nutritional expert, but you know there's certain companies that you can trust. So what makes a good pet food, a good cat food? It doesn't have to be super complex, right? Just think simple, how you'd feed yourself. You don't need a million ingredients. You just need enough of the right ones in a small number. So how could you keep this little kitten healthy? First of all, no kibble. So real meat, such as chicken, lamb, beef, bison, right? As a primary ingredient. You know, sources of high quality, highly digestible protein. Think about what a cat would eat in the wild that you already know, right? Lots of protein and fat, no carbohydrates. You know, minimum 12, a minimum 29% protein in their diet versus the 12% minimum in dogs. You know, essential plant nutrients, antioxidants, enzymes, plus natural vitamins, minerals, and fibers, right? Ideally, you're gonna have a better balance with the omega-6, so the less healthy fatty acids, versus more of the omega-3 fatty acids, the healthy, beneficial, essential fatty acids. The ideal ratio is two to one, not the 15 to one, currently linked to cancer, heart disease, autoimmune and skin disease. So what would be the ideal food? Like what's some of what Murray is on right now? There's no more kibble, he's on canned, some homemade and some raw cat food. It's high protein, low carbohydrate, high moisture content. Like that's what he gets. Concerned about toxic flea medications? I know I am. I don't like to apply them, never mind. See them on my critters. So here's some holistic options. One cedarwood oil spray. So cedarwood essential oil is probably the most important essential oil when we're looking at making a natural flea and tick spray, right? It's been shown to be effective against fleas. You need to be really cautious spraying any type of essential oil on your cat and it's gotta be diluted down to 2% or less. You wanna lightly miss them and then use a flea comb to spread it around only being applied once a week humidity decrease the humidity in your house in area in areas where there's or homes where there's low humidity less than five percent of the eggs survive right so get a dehumidifier can go a long way in stopping the flea life cycle right diatomaceous earth or chinchilla dust right so what is it just the skeletons of microscopic algae in areas where there was water bodies all over the earth. They've since dried up. What have they left? These little microscopic critters, right? And they're skeletons. It looks like a fine white powder. So I use it on my lettuce to kill slugs, keep the slugs from eating all the lettuce. I use it orally. It can be used orally as a natural dewormer. 
and also can use use topically to kill fleas. You can spray it in the cracks and crevices in your house. You kind of lightly dust it. Then you can lightly mist your cat with it. And then just use a flea comb to spread it through, applying it to your cat once a week. Neem oil, it's extracted from that neem tree, the tree native to Asia. Um, the ingredient is called azadiractin. It's a powerful insecticide, right? And that's what it's most known for. It's also got antiseptic, antifungal, antihistamine properties. So here's a way you can use it as a spray. It works really, like this is a great insecticide, neem, really underused. We're using two drops of neem, combining that with one cup of tea. I'm suggesting here like a nettle tea because nettle has also got some antihistamine qualities. And then using that as a spray, as a natural flea spray. You can also use neem topically for ear mites, where you'd one or two mils of neem combined with, say, one tablespoon of coconut oil and using that topically in the ears. Cat dip. The neat thing about catnip, if researchers have now since found this ingredient in catnip called nepetalactone, that's what gives catnip its great smell. Cats really obviously like it. But they found that that ingredient is 10 times more effective at repelling mosquitoes than needs. And guess what? Probably also, also does work well to repel fleas. Right? It's just like, aha. So there's a more than a reason that your cat likes the smell of catnip and your rolls in it. Helps keep critters away. So just get more catnip. Right at the very least, just have your cat in more catnip. Yes, there's kind of an area where it's going to be kind of catnippy in the house, but that's okay. You can imagine you have to use less natural insecticides. It's good for your cat, and your cat's happier. <sighs> Makes great sense to me. Ah, uh, vaccines, especially as we're in amongst a pandemic and we're slowly getting vaccinated, and we're back into many lockdowns right now. So what about vaccines for your cats? Like, obviously, you want to keep your cat healthy, prevent disease, but you don't want to make them sick in the first place, which I totally get because I'm in the same kind of balance. You know, unfortunately, veterinary-wise, it went from not having any vaccines, to developing all these vaccines, and yearly vaccinating cats. It's coming every year. It became a tool to get clients to come into the clinic. But that being said, you need to be really thinking about, like, okay, what am I to vaccinate my cat with? And... What is the risk versus the reward? Like what's the instance of this disease, right? I said, for example, the risk of your cat developing something serious like this, there's a vaccine associated sarcoma, could be from a rabies vaccine, a feline leukemia vaccine, like it's serious. If your cat gets that, like that's an incurable cancer, right? And it happens from vaccines. So you need to think, okay, what should I give my cat or not? If I were to have a kitten, this is what I would do. I would give him an FERCP vaccine, that's the two respiratory viruses, feline Khaleesi virus, feline uh, viral rhinotracheitis, along with feline panleukopenia or feline distemper. That can come as a combination. I give them that vaccine at eight weeks, follow up at 12 weeks. And that's it. I wouldn't give feline leukemia vaccine. They're saying if you've got a multi-cat household or you've got this massive outdoor cat population, you have an outdoor cat. Rabies vaccine, most states, is mandatory. But ideally, wait till your cat is older, about six months of age. Right? Don't do it, you know, especially at 12 weeks in combination with that last FERCP booster. And when the vaccines are given, you want to be giving them the sub-Q tissue with the lateral sides of the right and the left leg, not just in between the shoulder blades. The other diseases I would avoid, I wouldn't do FIP, I wouldn't do you know, FIV, Bordetella. I wouldn't do feeling leukemia in my own cat, for sure. And then at a year of age, like a year after that last booster, I do a titer test to see like what are his levels. And my cat, I mean, then not get any further vaccines. And just learn about diseases in your area or not. Honestly, if you got a strictly indoor cat, I, I wouldn't give him anything. Like you are not, your cat is not going to get, man, they're not going to get the respiratory diseases. They're not going to get distemper from you you're meeting a cat that sneezes on you and you bring it in so so incredibly unlikely person i wouldn't do anything as an indoor cat a bit more about supplements are they really necessary and you know, and if you feed your cat well like with whole foods you know the like poultry fish raw food fish oil they may never need a supplement but most of us don't regularly do this and I am of the strong belief that the right supplements can help prevent many of the more common cat diseases. 
right? So you're in the oil, like, okay, what do you do? So let's use your cat's immune system as an example. You know, there's a number of specific ingredients that I advise clients use to boost their cat's immune system. Essential fatty acids, probiotics, antioxidants, zinc, flavonoids, selenium, colostrum, the immune supported mushrooms, L-lysine. My supplement, Ultimate Feline Health Formula, it has probiotics, antioxidants, zinc, selenium, colostrum, the immune supported mushrooms, L-lysine, aloe vera. About our special, which is going on today, it's 70% off my supplement, Ultimate Feline Health Formula. No strings attached, no ongoing payments. Being offered for only $9.97. The regular price is $32.97. And plus, you're not locked into anything. Plus, we're introducing our new economy size, which includes six bottles all in one, which is an awesome deal. It's being offered like 55% off, which is huge. Plus, if you order in the next 12, probably 16 or 18 hours, you can get two additional free bonuses. First, a copy of my best-selling book, Veterinary Secrets, Natural Health for Dogs and Cats, and a copy of my book, Home Diets for Pets. So after the presentation, you can go to thecatsupplement.com forward slash special. Cat urinary tract problems. Do you need expensive prescription food? Here's just some holistic solutions that can work well to stop your cat's urinary tract problems. Now here's a kitty, here's a male cat, they're far more prone to it because they have this little thing called a sigmoid flexure in their urethra where little stones or little urolis can plug right up and completely obstruct them. You don't want to get to that. Your cat can't urinate, then you need to get into the veterinarian. It's almost like an emergency surgery. You're draining the bladder, passing a catheter to unplug them in the first place. What is FLUTD? Feline lower urinary tract disease. You've got a cat frequently urinating, straining to urinate. He or she may have bladder pain, licking of genitals, often blood in the urine. It's called idiopathic because we really don't know the underlying cause. What we do know is there's marked inflammation of the bladder. The bladder lining is thickened and then there's resulting blood in the urine. Some are related to diet, maybe bacteria or viruses, maybe the immune system overreacts attacks the bladder wall, or may just be a response to stress, right? Your cat, something is stressing your cat, you brought a new cat to your house, boom, it shows up as urinary tract disease. Hard to believe, but it does. But consider this statement. It comes from Dr. Lisa Pearson's site. You know, all dry foods, they're dangerously low on water, which can wreak havoc on your cat's urinary tract, but him and her for life-threatening and excruciating painfully urethral tract obstructions and possibly cystitis like ugh. what's the first thing i'm going to say get rid of the dry food so first if you let a cat strain to urinate not producing any urine regardless get him or into your vet they need to be examined you're gonna secondarily just having any urinary tract issue going on period it's still a good idea good idea to get an exam figure out what's going on first whether you need a home remedy or not and then you know you know what to use in all cases fluids infections inflammation additional fluid intake is mandatory only feeding canned food next uh for mo and i'm saying here for most cats any type of quality canned food will be helpful not just the veterinary foods because when you're feeding a quality canned food it's got high protein producing a slightly acidic urine when that urine is slightly acidic decreases the chance of infection it will help break down the crystals the most common crystals are called struvite and then the increased fluid dramatically in, the increased fluid from the canned food will, will help flush the bladder flushing that crystals that inflammatory cells out of the bladder learn how to give a sub-q fluids we talked about that earlier i've got a video on youtube shows you how to do it often this is all we had to do for some of the cats with the uh feline urinary tract disease Sub-Q fluids a couple times a week was enough, right? The additional fluid will flush out the bladder. When the bladder stretches with the additional fluid, it provides natural pain relief. Great option. Consider a natural hair, uh, pheromone. These are these happy hormones called feel away is a great one. You can get it as a diffuser. You plug it into area of your house. Your cat feels happier, less anxiety, mm -hmm. less urinary tract disease. Lots of cats respond to it. Here's a natural one called Bach Rescue Remedy. It's a flower remedy. And a number of cats respond to it as well. 
You're placing one drop twice daily in your cat's mouth. You can try it for three to four weeks to see if it's going to be helpful. Two key supplements in my supplement ultimate feeling health formula, glucosamine and chondroitin. Glucosamine is anti-inflammatory. It can help rebuild the damaged bladder lining. Chondroitin helps wall from being broken down in the first place. You know, 100 milligrams for, for 10 pounds daily of glucosamine, 50 milligrams for 10 pounds daily of chondroitin. Lavender essential oil on my last, that first cat Gussie you saw lounging there on the couch. She used to yowl at night. So I was putting in 10 drops of lavender in one cup of water and I'd throw the diffuser in and Gussie would sleep through the night. A great way to decrease anxiety. It could be helpful for urinary tract disease. L-theanine, it's amino acid found in green tea. It's been shown to decrease anxiety. It be really helpful for FLUTD. The standard cat dose is about half of the tablet 25 milligrams twice a day then cbd so this is giving me one of my new sort of go-to when anyone's talking about urinary tract disease in their cats because one cbd will decrease anxiety it's natural anxiety work that's part of its big key benefits is lowering anxiety but secondarily too it concentrates in the bladder when it's in the bladder it's also a natural anti-inflammatory so it's working two ways to help urinary tract disease. And lots of cats that have FLUTD really respond really well to CBD, doses of three milligrams for 10 pounds of body weight daily. Diabetes in cats. Mm, Murray's our poster child here for it. There he is, our reformed diabetic Murray. So where is the pancreas? It's kind of tucked in here next to the small intestine. You can see here, here where the liver is, it's got a duct that secretes stuff into the intestine to help break down. It's got pancreatic enzymes. They break down food. At the same time, too, it secretes insulin, and that's what helps get blood sugar into your cat's cells. So what is diabetes? It's a result of the pancreas either not producing enough insulin or else your, the cat, your cat cells no longer respond to the insulin that's in their body. That's called type 2 but diabetes. Regardless, it results in increased drinking, increased urination. Right? They eat a high-carb meal, their glucose spikes, they rack, lack the ability to rapidly break it down. Hence, I mean, to me, it makes so much sense, right? Hence, we've got all these cats with diabetes. So if you suspect your cat is diabetic, first thing you're going to go see your vet, right? You're going to do blood, urine, blood, blood sugar curve. You're going to confirm the diabetes, make sure there's no other secondary complications. Next, all cats, once they're confirmed diabetic, start on insulin, but a bunch can eventually come off. Dietary changes, changing to a less than 5% carbohydrate, high protein cat food is the single most important change to make. You're getting, getting rid of the dry kibble, you're only feeding quality canned homemade raw food. Right? You just got to make sure it's a good quality canned food, not the cheaper kinds. They may be using a like plant protein or still have carbs in that canned food. And it seems like I'm saying the same thing over and over again because I need to reiterate it, right? Like it's huge, right? If that's the only thing you do for your diabetic cat, there it is. Like you just get rid of the kibble. Good quality canned cat food. And at least, in my opinion, 50% of diabetic cats can get off of insulin if they get on this regimen. Add in a good quality omega-3 fatty acids such as krill oil that may increase insulin sensitivity. A standard cat dose, 500 milligrams per cat per day. Krill itself may be more effective than fish oils. It lacks many of the toxins. It's got a great EPA, DHA um, profile. CBD or cannabis oil. It's got a bunch of studies showing its benefits for diabetes as well as having anti-inflammatory properties for the pancreas. Allowing the pancreas to produce more insulin may be affecting the cells that are no longer responding to insulin. Regardless, it's worth trying. Doses of 3 milligrams per 10 pounds of body weight daily. Quenzyme Q10. So is this antioxidant? We talked about it for its use for cats that have gingivitis, for animals that have heart disease. But also it's got specific studies so it has been proven that animals suffering from diabetes are quenzyme Q10 deficient. That's like, ah, okay. Because many people ask me, like, there's a billion studies for diabetes because it's so rampant in our human population, especially type 2 diabetes, which is diet-induced. And that's what most cats get. 
That's why there's so many things studied. But this is like one of the few that most people agree on, coenzyme Q10. All right, we're looking at doses of 20 milligrams per 10 pounds of body weight daily. Then chromium. So it's a nutrient, and some of the diabetic diets, they specifically inc- include chromium because of it. And it's got, and it's been shown to be clearly beneficial for diabetes, but an easy way to give chromium is with brewer's yeast, right? What's a pretty easy dose? Brewer's yeast is also rich in the B vitamins. We're looking at do- standard doses, but one teaspoon per cat per day. It's just easy just to sprinkle in your cat's food. So you got a cat that's diabetic, you're like, hey, you want to eat something easy I-, I can add in as a supplement? Brewer's yeast is, brewer's yeast is a great option. A few more things to think about. Probiotics. They've been shown to decrease low-level inflammation, making them beneficial for cats with diabetes. Another nutrient, colostrum, found in the mother's first milk. It's been studied for its benefits in increasing metabolic rate, increasing muscle mass, and being beneficial for diabetes, right? You know, this one study, lactobacillus acidophilus, could help improve blood sugar tolerance in animal studies, and also they talk about bovine colostrum's ability to maintain balanced blood sugar levels can have a significant impact on people with diabetes. And that is a 2012 study. Both the, both of these, probiotics and colostrum, are in my supplement, Ultimate Feline Health Formula. Hyperthyroid cat, are there any holistic options? Fortunately, yes, there are. So there's a thyroid gland up in here on either side of the windpipe or the trachea. What is hyperthyroidism, right? It's a relatively new disease. We think it's been linked to dry, high-carb kibble and some of the chemicals in cat food, unfortunately. Usually we bought a cat over the age of 10, increased appetite, losing weight, often a sparse hair coat, right? Typically drinking, urinating more often, obvious loss of muscle mass. Often veterinary-wise, you can palpate this enlarged thyroid gland going along with this racing heart rate, right? Their whole metabolism is wrapped up. All right, first thing, you go see your veterinarian, you get a confirmatory diagnosis. If your cat is otherwise clinically healthy and this is an option for you, you're okay for something conventional, consider uh, radioactive iodine treatment. I've seen lots of uh, cat parents that had cats for hyperthyroid, like one dose of radioactive iodine. You have to go see a specialist and that was it. Like that was enough to cure their hyperthyroidism. So it's a good, good conventional option if that's available to you and you're open to it. But other things to consider. Couple of different herbs, bugleweed and melissa. Melissa in particular, they've been used in combination to, to combat the effects of hyperthyroid disease. Uh, standard dose of the tinctures, or one drop per pound of body weight twice daily of the tinctures. Melissa is the easier one to get. It's also known as lemon balm. So it grows, it's related to mint, right? Related to catnip. I used to have it growing in our house, right? Growing outside our house, in the garden. It's traditionally been used to improve mood and cognitive function so you consider using something a lemon balm tea or you got a hyperthyroid cat just get the lemon balm make yourself the tea and then substitute your cat's water for the tea as a super good option hills make the product called yd so it's formulated to be deficient in iodine with a simple goal of providing less building blocks for your cat's thyroid tumor hmm sounds great right feed your cat a food and cure his hyperthyroidism the problem is, is that it starves your entire cat of iodine, which is kind of a critical nutrient for the array of different other body systems. You know, so this Dr. Pearson was just saying, right, I'd only use it if one, your the cat was not a good candidate for radioactive iodine, not a good surgical candidate, uh, could not take the conventional topical medication, which is tapazole or methimazole topically. In other words, she was saying, I'd only see this YD as a last resort, Certainly not a first line treatment. Hmm. So you're going to be super cautious using the diet is the point. And that makes sense to me. And that last thing I wanted to bring this up was this homeopathic called Nat Muir. <clears throat> because there was a published paper on it showing like a single dose of this homeopathic remedy cured a number of cats that were hyperthyroid. Like just one 200C dose, which is crazy to believe, but it did. Right? And it was based on this class uh, selection based on the principles of classic homeopathy, right? It says, 
It was administered in the form of the 200C potency, the thyroid levels of eight cats returned to normal, and the clinical signs of the hyperthyroidism also disappeared. Wow. So you've got a hyperthyroid cat, you want to try something quick and easy? I know I would try that mirror. So inflammatory bowel disease or IBD, chronic diarrhea, chronic vomiting and diarrhea, seems to be more common in our cats. It's good, this inflammatory disease with unknown cause, like there's hypersensitivities against food or maybe bacterial antigens, chronic vomiting and diarrhea with weight loss. So what can you do, right? Initially, you're looking at a specific dietary therapy. You're using a type of protein your cat has likely never had, say something like turkey. And we can get these specialized proteins. Do we know it? Most likely a food reaction. Adding in, think of adding in the good bacteria, like the probiotics. Antidiarrheals as needed, right? So you're looking at something like Imodium as needed is a good option short term, you know? Half of a two milligram tablet or twice daily as needed. Then consider some of the natural immunosuppressants because typically part of the veterinary treatment would be like prednisone, suppress the overactive immune response. But you could consider CBD, cannabidiol. You could consider licorice root for short term, like just suppressing that inflammatory response. Then consider this guy, Slippery Elm. So we talked about it earlier. For cats that have CKD, you know, they're, uh, they're, it's a great antacid. They feel kind of nauseous from kidney disease. But it's also a super adoption for cats that have IBD. Right? It forms this kind of jelly-like layer. a coat the upper intestinal tract all the way down to the lower intestinal tract. So you have decreased vomiting, decreased diarrhea. And it's safe for your cat to be on long-term. Standard cat dose is one capsule per cat a day. Just mix into their food. You've got an IBD cat. You haven't tried Slippery Elm. I encourage you to try it. Cancer cats. Do you have some other options? You bet you do. Here's that nasty type of cancer we talked about earlier. This feline fibrosarcoma or vaccine-associated sarcoma. It goes up often in between the shoulder blades because that's where the vaccines are often given. Pretty much impossible to remove surgically because it spreads out these tentacles. Antioxidants, they're more preventive. If your cat has a great, you know, at increased amount of antioxidants in their diet, they're far less likely to get some of these cancers. So increased amounts of vitamin E, additional selenium. Omega-3 fatty acids, they can be beneficial for two things. One, to de just to prevent the likelihood of cancer showing up in the first place, but also being beneficial if your cat is to have cancer. Krill oil doses, about 500 milligrams per cat per day. Dandelion root tincture. I've got a specific video on YouTube shows you how to make it. But the just of this comes from the U University of Windsor here in Canada. They've done a bunch of studies and actually concentrated what's in dandelion root and found it to be very beneficial for some of these end stage type leukemias that are non responsive uh, to chemotherapy. Like a serious, serious big benefit from dandelion root. <clears throat> so you're looking at doses of this tincture of about you could actually make up, you add a tincture to a cup of water and that's what, and that, and you simmer in that for 15 or 20 minutes. And that's what you give to your cat per day. And you'd expect to see a response in about 14 days if it's going to be beneficial. 95% curcumin, I mean, it's great anti-inflammatory, works really well in combination um, as natural pain control. A bunch of studies showing the benefit of turmeric or curcumin in particular uh, for animals that have cancer. We're looking at cat doses of 100 milligrams per 10 pounds of body weight once or twice daily. CBD, especially in combination with THC, is a, I personally, I would encourage you to get, especially when you get THC as well, at least 25% um, THC be great. You're basing it on the CBD doses of three milligrams per 10 pounds of body weight daily. Partly how they think it's working is some of the cannabinoids, they actually bind to receptors on the, can, on the cancer cells which then allows the immune system to recognize them. It's like, ah. Oh. So it's not, they're working in multiple ways. And it's not every cat, every cancer is going to respond, but some are responding. And if you have a cat with cancer, darn right to be using CBD, especially CBD in combination with THC. Fenbendazole for cancer. So fenbendazole, the name of, this is the old dewormer called Panicure. Been shown to be really helpful. 
um, for some people that have had cancer. You know, this one paper was published a few years ago. This person had serious end stage cancer, no longer responsive to chemotherapy. It spread throughout their body. And sure enough, they responded to this. This is the only thing we responded to. They talked to their friend who was a vet. I want you to try Panicure. Worth trying in your cat if they've got cancer. I definitely try it. Really safe. I used to use it lots in practice as just a cat dewormer. It also works against uh, as if we've got a cat that say has beaver fever or giardia, is we used to use Panicure. It's also a good broad spectrum warmer and super safe. Dosing it is about 50 mg per kilo, which is about two and a half, two to two and a half mils of Panicure once a day for three days, four days on, four, three days on, four days off. You repeat that for a month. Melatonin for cancer. This is known as a sleep hormone. So if we were dealing with some of the cancers that are hormone responsive, like say, i.e. say a cat that's got mammary adenocarcinoma, that's like say breast cancer, consider melatonin as well. Bunch of studies showing it would be beneficial for those cancers. And it also works in conjunction with radiation and chemotherapy. Standard dose is about two milligrams per 10 pounds of body weight daily. And then think of the immune supportive supplements as much as anything to prevent this from happening in the first place. Probiotics, antioxidants, zinc, flavonoid, colostrum, the immune supportive mushrooms, some of the immune, certain amino acids like L-lysine, aloe vera. Many of these are in my supplement, Ultimate Feline Health Formula. Home diets for cats. It's an awesome little happy looking kitty. I love that picture. The cat's just like, I love you. I'm gonna sleep on your face. I do encourage you to start making food for your cat at home. I would think it's a good idea, even starting once a week. This is some specific point, especially if you're going to solely make cat homemade cat food at home. So one, focus on the protein with balanced amino acid profiles that best suit cats. That's the poultry. So chicken, turkey, duck. No carbohydrates. as a no rice, no potato, sweet potato, corn, etc. Adding in an additional balanced fat is necessary. A good omega-6 to 3 ratio balanced nutritious fat. I prefer is sunflower oil. You can also use coconut oil. Omega-3 fatty acids should be added in some form. They're just so beneficial for most of their common cat diseases. So in the form of krill oil, fish, or flax oil. Krill is most nutrient-dense and beneficial of all the products. It's got a great EPA, DHA fatty acid profile. Plus, it contains the antioxidant astaxanthin. It's also high in vitamin D. Calcium is required to be added in, but your cat's not consuming bones, I, I suspect. You're not giving your cat bones. So I prefer eggshells. You dry them, roast them in the oven for 10 minutes, grind them in a coffee grinder. The standard amount is about a half a teaspoon per cat a day. Vitamin D is needed, but it's in the egg yolks and the red meat. It's also fairly high in levels in the krill oil. Vitamin E is in the sunflower oil, plus, and vitamin E is also in coconut oil, a great antioxidant. Minerals, your cat needs iron, it's in the animal protein. Zinc, pretty key for the immune system, for the skin. It's in the meat, it's also in flaxseed if you add them. Taurine is needed and calcium is needed, but those are both nutrients that are added to this diet. Lastly, additional fibers. Many cats do need additional fiber, especially if they not really adapted to a home diet. So you can add that in the form of canned pumpkin and or ground flax seeds. Here's what this diet consists of. It's the ground turkey diet for cats. One pound of ground turkey, one egg, one tablespoon of sunflower oil, krill oil, 500 milligrams, Morton's light salt, a quarter of a teaspoon, iodide salt, a quarter of a teaspoon, calcium carbonate without vitamin D, like a thousand milligrams or half a teaspoon of ground eggshell, one scoop of ultimate feline or an adult multivitamin multimineral supplement, and then taurine powder for cats, a quarter of a teaspoon or one 500 milligram tablet. And that's essential. I mean, if you just feed your cat one home diet a week and they're on other commercial stuff, you don't need to add all this stuff. But this is, if this is going to be their sole diet, then you should. So you're going to saute the ground turkey, adding in that egg. Uh, you're going to saute it in the sunflower oil. Add after you're going to grind grind your eggshell, mix that together with your scoop of ultimate feline plus your krill oil and the taurine supplement. Mix that all together, add that to the cool mixture, store in the fridge. An average cat, an average cat's going to eat about a third of a well-packed cup daily, twice a day. 
but he may he or she like my cat murray he'd eat that entire amount for a day murray loved it and he did eat that whole amount for the day scabby skin and hair loss the most effective remedies you can use right now here's some good ones to consider so allergies in our cats they're not super common but seem to be more common some of the external signs itchiness constant or intermittent scratching chronic licking skin rashes hair loss bumps on the skin right three main possibilities external parasites such as fleas food for cat food for cats is fish or milk or most common food allergens then there can be environmental allergens and pollens to house dust mites regardless the immune system overreacts causing the severe itchiness all right try to soothe it topically calendula is a great herbal ointment especially in combination with aloe to be applied twice daily Antihistamines, cats respond really well to chlortriplon at two milligrams to three times a day. Right? Obviously, it's best first to consult your vet before you start using antihistamine. Take usually takes about 14 days to see if it's going to be beneficial. And I find they work better in combination with the omega-3 fatty acids. Also consider a natural antihistamine, though. Nettle is a good, good option. If you've got a chronically itching cat, you can just get dried nettle, add a teaspoon into your cat's food daily and or make nettle tea and substitute their water for nettle tea. It's a super good option. Works great. Licorice root tincture. And licorice root is sort of considered the classic corticosteroid. It's meant for short-term treatment, right? So your cat's got this big itchy flare-up, like, oh, I just got to decrease the itching. A quarter to half a mil of the tincture once or twice daily. It can also be mixed topically with coconut oil, like we're applying to the gums, and then applied topically to a local, a local area of inflamed skin. So your cat has FAD, that's flea allergy dermatitis. You can apply this to the base of the tail more often. They're really chewing and biting. Then castor oil. I'm sure you've never thought of using this in the skin. I, I really think it's a big overlooked home remedy. It's been shown to be beneficial for constipation, but also it gets absorbed into the skin. The active ingredient in castor oil is ricinoleic acid. Great as a natural anti-inflammatory, great for topical pain control. It can help speed wound healing because it provides the right environment, keeps wound moist, keeps the wound moist, does protects it from drying out, and increase the rate of the healing cells that you want to help heal a wound. It can be used topical for ear mites. It can also help for allergies and dry skin. It's like super. Here's a really good skin concoction: one tablespoon of castor oil because that's really thick and viscous, combined with one tablespoon of coconut oil. That great combination is great to decrease inflammation and just overall skin health. Uh, this one I want to add in, an anesthesia in your cat, why or what you're being told about your cat could be wrong. Because not so, I find so few cat people are aware of this. That's my former associate, Dr. Sackney, doing a cat spay. Your cat's intestinal tract, it's much shorter than that of dogs. They're not just small dogs. What this means is they have a really rapid transit of food, meaning that food moves really quickly through your cat. In a couple hours, they eat, it's pretty much gone through them. When you think about this in surgery, we used to say like, okay, like fast your cat, take away food away at six the night before and bring them in on an empty stomach. Hmm, not necessarily the best advice. In a healthy cat, many feline veterinarians are suggesting that there's no need for overnight anesthetic fasting, right? You don't need to fast. In fact, if you do that, you can create problems with your cat. Right? They could, this can make them prone to a condition called low blood sugar, hypoglycemia, during and after surgery. It can make surgery more risky, make anesthesia more risky, can make mean delayed anesthetic recovery. So ultimately, what should you do? Well, talk to your vet. Before you're going in for surgery, talk to this about your vet. Say for my cat, Murray, if he was going in for surgery, uh, what I would do is I would wake up at 6 a.m. that morning. I'd give him a bit of canned food about a quarter of his regular amount, so about a quarter of a can. He'd eat some then, say scheduled at nine. And then I'd take, let him eat for 50 minutes, take it away. Because I know three, hour late, three hours later, it's already through him. There will be no risk for him. The reason they tell you to fast is they want your animal to throw up, vomit during anesthesia, and then aspirate on that vomit. And I'm thinking like 20 years of vet practice, I don't recall ever seeing one cat vomit. So I was like... And I sure saw a bunch of cats get really cold in surgery and take a long time to recover. So I'm like, okay, this makes huge sense to me. And that's the problem, once again, is most veterinarians are practicing with all animals and they just 
most of what they're seeing is dogs and it's like a cat is a slightly smaller dog yeah he's different but not that different and we're just gonna apply the same thing regardless of the species and they're really different good bacteria or probiotics for cats why should you be considering them well guess what most cats are still on these crappy hard carb, carb diets not eating well and there's a bunch of things you should be doing to improve the health of your cat one being probiotics why uh, they've been shown to be helpful for acute gastroenteritis vomiting diarrhea inflammatory bowel disease and allergy prevention right helping main, maintain and decrease the likelihood of obesity help for urinary tract infections gut infections like helicobacter even parasitic infections Right, some of the big ones we'll, we're seeing now with our cats being beneficial for diarrhea, IBD, anxiety. There's the anxiety linked to these cats that get repeated urinary tract disease, FOUTD. Kidney disease, even with cognitive function, just to name a few. Right. I wanted to mention this one company, Animal Biome. Because in particular, say you've got a cat with some really serious chronic disease. Say these guys that have inflammatory bowel disease this feline triad disease where, where it can be a combination of, of chronic pancreatitis inflammatory bowel disease liver disease and you're like oh, i tried everything you made me see in a spatula so you don't know what to do a bunch of people have benefited from this where they're actually looking at the microflora in your cat's intestinal tract and they're actually re replacing it so a good option to consider and I, so i don't want to put the slide up here because i think a number of cat parents could benefit from it Here's a, my sort of advised commercial cat food list. It's not complete, but these are ones that I'm comfortable having you look at and consider. Artemis, Azmira, Back to Basics, Candy Day, Champion Pet Foods, First Mate, Flint River Ranch, Halo Holistic Plan, Honest Kitchen, Life's Abundance, Nature of Pet Products, Nature's Logic for the third year in a row. It's been featured on Susan Thixon's The List of Beth, Best Pet Foods. Nature's Variety, Pet Curing, Pet Nutrition. Solid Gold, Timberwolf Organics. Versus Beyond Wellness and Wysong. A bit more about my supplement, Ultimate Feline Health Formula. What's in it and does it work? Well... It's a complete vitamin and mineral blend of 25 different nutrients, including antioxidants. All right. This comp this one study was talked about the effect of nutritional interventions on the longevity of senior cats. Results from the study suggest that a diet supplemented with a combination of antioxidants, prebiotics, and long chain polyunsaturated fatty acids can increase lifespan in senior cats. Makes sense to me which are also in Ultimate Feline. I have a joint support blend, therapeutic levels of three key nutrients, glucosamine, chondroitin, and MSM. Some interesting things about this. This comes from JAMA, right? Compelling evidence that glucosamine and chondroitin may interfere with the progression of osteoarthritis. Makes huge sense. And also, what about for urinary tract disease, right? This, this one review, that oral glucosamine supplementation has few side effects and long-term therapy may be useful useful in conjunction with other therapies in cats with chronic recurrent feline lower urinary tract disease makes sense i also have a prebiotic a probiotic blend prebiotics or it's well or they're what's there to help the good bacteria the probiotics grow All right. here how to manage feline chronic diarrhea probiotics reported to play a role in a not just improving GI microflora, but improving immune response, as well as hastening the resolution of diarrhea, which is huge, right? It's because we now know that so much of what's going on in the immune system is located in the intestinal tract. You improve that, you go such a big, long way improving the overall health of your cat, right? I've got this key immunoprotective blend, colostrum, inositol, aloe vera, and the mushroom I take. Here's some a review study of colostrum, right? And this, this is an older study, but it's so pertinent even now today, showing saying that colostrum is used as a nutraceutical treatment for animals of all ages to increase resistance to the infection disease called by a wide range of pathogens. It also is used for applications such as healing of intestinal lesions, 
I say lesions from an anti-inflammatory or some other conventional medication and increasing the absorption of nutrients from the gastrointestinal tract. Wow. A bit more about ultimate feline. Well, does it work? This is probably best answered by the over 10,000 cat owners who've used ultimate feline health formula, right? From Carol, my cats all had such silky fur. It was incredible. After about four days, I started using the cat supplements. My cats all had such silk, silky fur. It was incredible. We have seven older cats, two are arthritis for sure. So they've been eating and they all love it. The supplement, they've been moving around a lot more and actually are acting a lot younger. Wow. That's awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you, Carol. After about seven days or so on the supplement, his sneezing and nasal discharge stopped almost completely. As you know, I ordered a jar some time ago, use it for my cat who has quite serious upper respiratory problems. But at the time I started him the supplement, I knew he needed an antibiotic to stop the infection. But instead I tried the supplement and after about seven days or so on the supplement, his sneezing and nasal discharge stopped almost completely. That is awesome. Thank you, Nancy from Manitoba. Right. Marg from Ottawa, Canada say, jump, jump up on the porch banister railing and even start to chase the other cats. Right. As a cat owner, I wasn't sure what vitamins work with joints in my cats or what they were lacking in their diet. After trying all fit feline, I was really surprised to see our five-year-old cat, Scotty. He's our heaviest cat. Jump up on the porch banister railing and even start to chase the other cats. Big change there. Wow. All of our cats have a heightened energy and awareness. So as an animal Reiki master, I'm thrilled to pieces. Great stuff. Thanks, Dr. Jones. Thanks, Marge. That's awesome. Thank you. Our cats are eating better, have much more energy, and not getting hairballs or vomiting. I've ordered three of the cat supplements, and it's a wonderful product. Wow. Even this hot weather, they're running around the house and playing. It's great to see them feeling so energetic and healthy. I'll definitely be back to order more. Cynthia from Wyoming. Thanks, Cynthia. And this is from Sandra from St. Peter, Jersey. This cat supplement has literally been a lifesaver for my cat. Right? She's a 16-year-old cat in early stages of renal failure. She's a kitten. She's never liked canned food. The only wet food you'll eat is tuna. She tolerated the renal diet for a month, but she wouldn't eat it. Now, guess what? She mixes in the supplement and she eats the food with gusto, which is awesome, right? She said, soon my cat is now eating more and even putting on some of the weight she lost with renal failure. She is certainly 100% more active and is now out and about all day and night. It's like, wow, that's just awesome. And I'm delighted. Regards, Sandra. Thanks, Sandra. Nice, you guys. There are some awesome, nice things to say. So thank you guys for attending the webinar. I hope you found it helpful for both you and your cat. Hey, and a bit more about her special at 70% off the supplement, Ultimate Feline Health Formula. No strings attached, no ongoing payments being offered for only $9.97, the regular price being $32.97. Plus, we get our new like economy size. This is brand new, just new for the webinar. So it includes six bottles, which is great. And when you look at it uh, in compared to the small bottles, that is 55% off. Like it's you're, it's a massive savings. Plus, if you order the next 12 hours, you can get two additional free bonuses. First, a copy of my best-selling book, Veterinary Secrets, Snacks for Health for Dogs and Cats. Then a copy of my book, Home Dives for Pets. And now that we're done the presentation, yay, you can go to thecatsupplement.com forward slash special. So thanks, you guys. Thanks for being on today's presentation. Good. So we have a little bit of time. Hooray. Okay. So let me just go on here. First, thanks for being on here. I'm just see. Oh, good. Someone says their cat that their cat jet suffers from arthritis and it's working really well. Um, let me see here. I'm just so first, you guys. Thanks for being on here today. I'm just gonna scroll here. My cat is on CBD oil. He's on an Ultimate Omega Three. My problem is one of my cats will urinate outside the litter box, but not all the time. He's been to the vets. Four year old. He eats wet food. And my cat, my vet, my cat's vet says he has feline urinary, F-L-U-T-D. That's what it sounds like, Kathy. So he's on the CBD, which is great. And, that, and that's what I found has been most beneficial. The next other big thing I'd suggest, I, if you've yet to try Feel Away as a diffuser, I think it's a great option. Um, 
Somebody says here, my cat has liver issues, high, uh, a couple of high elevated liver enzymes. The Probably the biggest supplement I've seen being beneficial for liver disease is milk thistle. But 100 milligrams per cat a day is pretty standard. Someone says, how often does your cat defecate? Typically once a day is pretty standard. It's usually every other day. So your cat may need a bit more moisture in her diet and you may want to consider adding in a bit of canned pumpkin. Even like a half a teaspoon a day is a great option to increase fiber. Uh, someone says, thank you, you're welcome. Uh, the price is, I think the price is in US dollars. Uh, let's see, equal. Thanks, you guys. Oh, here it is, and there it is, the catsupplement.com. Mary asked about any natural dewormers. Honestly, Mary, the one I find more beneficial than everything is that diatomaceous earth. So good, I'm just going to grab it. I think I have it here. I'm just going to show you. I mean, I don't. Like, this is it here, right? Diatomaceous earth, right? It's this fine white powder meant for oral consumption. And really really safe I and mean, i've used it and it just looks like a powder the thing is you you just mix it in to like a you can mix it into their canned food if you feed canned food All right there it is there it's not going to do the thing is it's not going to do any harm at all right i do about a half a teaspoon per cap per day i do that once a day for a week um let's see here uh Someone said, after extensive research, I believe all vaccines, you're probably right. They have lots of potential side effects. Um, is it okay to add filter water? You bet it is. Some said they learned a lot. You're welcome. Yay. Uh, let's see here. How do you spell The dewormer, diotomate, D-I-A. Here, I'll put it in. I'll type it in for you. This is the, the best dewormer, in my opinion. It's also the safest. Oh, you know, you, Artemisia's Earth, Earth for deworming, for deworming, okay, and so there is a, it's a bit of a misnomer, so if you've got Diatomaceous Earth that is meant for oral ingestion for people, the risk of ingesting it food grade diatomaceous earth exactly is relatively minimal um should a cat with high liver enzymes be on a liver diet honestly it depends what the other line cause of the liver disease is right what do they think is going on so is it like for lots of guys and they're feeling <laughs> cholangitis cholangial hepatitis i think it'd be more immune related stuff we don't know for sure what's underlying um the liver does a really good job of regenerating itself if you, if you remove whatever is causing the liver damage. So typically, I'm looking at the food. You're looking at the diet. Is there anything in there that can damage the liver? Is your cat on like canned food, like a say a bunch of tuna? It's got high mercury, too much fish. I'd be eliminating that and then adding in the milk thistle. Uh, yeah, you can definitely add some of the tinctures right to food is fine. Just whether your cat's gonna drink it or not. Because you know, cats are pretty particular. That's what I find. That's why Murray, I just squirted it into his mouth. Uh, someone said here, can I give it to my cat who had uh let's see how do you spell the warmer? Crypto uh, are you saying you do your cat have crypto somebody said their cat has a parasite? Is it cryptosporidium? Is they can get cryptosporidium or Coccidiosis. There's a couple of different related type parasites. Um, will diatomaceous earth work for those? That I'm not sure. I'd have to spend, I'll, I'll have to look that up because I haven't thought about using a cryptosporidium or a coccidiosis or diatomaceous earth. It may, but it may not. Um, okay. You know what I'm going to do, you guys? Because we're here. I'm going to like the supplement, slippery elm. It does really help. And someone has popped in about that which is great uh can you make a flea spray with neem and catnip oil that's a good idea you know what okay whoever suggested that that's a great idea i'm gonna look into that okay you just gave me a future video idea suggestion too which is awesome so i'm gonna look into that because i love that idea uh, someone said they like the podcast hey 
Thank you, Jerry from Greece. That's a long way away. Uh, okay. Hi, you guys. You're from all over there. Okay. Tons of nice things. Thanks, you guys. So I'm just going to put in. So if I haven't been able to answer your questions, you got specific questions. I'm just going to put in my email. Uh, Dr. Matt, for you on today's webinar. So it is going to be Dr. Andrew at the cat. Dr. Andrew at the cat supplement.com. Okay, there it is. Fortunately, I can't do any con like specific one-on-one -on -one consults, um, but feel free to follow up with that email on today's webinar. Um, and because Angelica, to pre you had a cavity on doxycycline, fed urine, she's got a uh, squamous cell, she's got a, where is the squamous cell carcinoma? She had a type of cancer, squamous cell is a skin cancer. Um, and you're asking what else can you do for a cat with a UTI? Honestly, what concentrates really well in the bladder, that's got natural antibiotics. Like most of the teas, right? The herbal teas are great. Um, but you know what? Uh, I read one big thing. They're actually using honey. Like honey concentrates well. It's great for UTIs. You know, a cat, like a quarter to half a teaspoon per cat a day is fine. And then mm, honestly, most of the teas that you're going to feed that we take are also antibacterial. Like just... You know, plain old black tea has got some great antibacterial properties to it. I will clip and out reduce the lump in your cat's neck. It may, but that would be more something you want to use as a compress. Uh, let's see here. Somebody said diabetes and weight. Yeah, diabetes is just like canned high-protein cat food. More than anything else, maybe additional colostrum. If your cat won't eat pumpkin, some people find like Metamucil you can mix in. Um, the other thing is flat, like grind, grind some flax seeds and mix that into the can, a little bit of the canned food. Uh, um, let's see here. And anything else? Chronic upper, yeah, chronic upper respiratory. Right, for the chronic upper respiratory, like the things we talked about, the L-lysine, the elderberry. Honestly, I think the propolis is a good option. Too. Okay, so thanks you guys. So I'm just gonna sign out now, hit myself out for lunch. Uh, but so thanks for being on the webinar. Hope you found it helpful. Feel free, feel free to follow up with any specific emails. Uh, once again, thanks for being on here. It's Dr. Jones.